The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 7 beginning at verse 1. Some Pharisees and several teachers of the law of Moses from Jerusalem came and gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples ate without first washing their hands. The Pharisees and many other Jewish people obey the teachings of their ancestors. They always wash their hands in the proper way before eating. None of them will eat anything they buy in the market until it is washed. They also follow a lot of other teachings, such as washing cups, pitchers and bowls. The Pharisees and teachers asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples obey what our ancestors taught us to do? Why do they eat without washing their hands? Jesus replied, You are nothing but show-offs. The prophet Isaiah was right when he wrote that God had said, All of you praise me with your words, but you never really think about me. It is useless for you to worship me when you teach rules made up by humans. You disobey God's commands in order to obey what humans have taught. Jesus called the crowd together again and said, Pay attention and try to understand what I mean. The food that you put into your mouth doesn't make you unclean and unfit to worship God. The bad words that come out of your mouth are what makes you unclean. Out of your heart come evil thoughts, vulgar deeds, stealing, murder, unfaithfulness in marriage, greed, meanness, deceit, indecency, envy, insult, pride and foolishness. All of these come from your heart and they are what make you unfit to worship God. Hello again and welcome to a beautiful sunny Kobe. The weather is very different from last week um, and today I'm in a different place too. Today I'm sitting outside the Kobe Central District Courthouse. Um, you can see it's a bit of a beautiful building with kind of the, uh, I'm not sure of the dates but the lower part is original and, and the new part as you can see is kind of very modern. It's a lovely fusion um, of, of design styles. And we're here because today I want to think about rules. And I'm sure that you'll realize that since the advent of COVID-19, our world has changed so much. We do things differently and we follow different rules. I think we're probably more aware of people around us who are coughing Maybe we look at how close we stand to others and maybe we try to perhaps keep our distance a little bit more. I'm assuming that most of us will wear masks. Masks. And I guess that whenever we see a chance to get a squirt of sanitizer, we take it. And we probably wash our hands thoroughly. What was it? sing happy birthday twice. My hands have never been so clean. But why do we follow these rules? Because we want to avoid catching something nasty. So they're pretty sensible rules actually. But sometimes don't we humans just love making senseless rules? Or maybe we know them by a different name. Traditions especially those that have been handed down over the years. And occasionally, some of them may actually end up becoming more important than they should be. I want to tell you a story today about just that fact. It was written by an Indian Jesuit priest called Anthony de Mello, and it is called The Guru's Cat. When the Guru sat down to worship each evening, the ashram cat would get in the way and distract the worshippers. So he ordered that the cat be tied during evening worship. After the guru died, the cat continued to be tied during evening worship. And when the cat died, another cat was brought to the ashram so that it could be duly tied during evening worship. Centuries later, learned papers were written by the Guru's disciples on the liturgical significance of tying a cat while worship is performed. Now maybe you laugh at this story, imagining cats being tied up in church and all that, and that's good, 
because some of the traditions that we follow today are very laughable, but not to everybody, and certainly not to the Pharisees who came to visit Jesus in today's Gospel reading. Now they just loved rules and traditions and they boasted of that fact about how good they were because they followed all these rules. And they were not slow to pick out those people who weren't doing the same. And yep, they spotted that Jesus' disciples didn't wash their hands in the correct way before eating. Terrible, they thought. They are not following our tradition. They are not following the rules. So the Pharisees asked Jesus why? And his answer? Because it's not important. But what is important is that you follow God's rules, not those made by your ancestors. You guys praise me with your words, Jesus said, but you don't really think about what it is that you're saying. You prefer human traditions to God's law. And that is wrong. Because he explained, although people might be considered unclean by their standards, if they didn't wash their hands properly, or if they ate the wrong things, what was more important, Jesus said, was not what went in, but what comes out of their mouths, the words they use in how they live, and the behavior that they showed. Rather than focus on petty rules made by people in the past, Jesus said they needed to follow the rules instituted by God. A clean heart is much more important than clean hands. And that is something that we need to remember too. We need to think about how much of our life is spent trying to follow rules or traditions that we've been taught so that perhaps we end up missing the point of life itself. We need to look at what we say and what we do and what we are and see if our doing and our being and our saying is being done for the right reasons because it is what God wants and not just because it is expected or because it is what we've been taught or because it is what makes us look good, or even because it is a tradition. When I was being trained for the priesthood, sounds like I'm a dog, doesn't it? And it was a bit. I was taught how to stand in the right way, how to pray, how to hold my hands in the right way, and which order to light the candles on the altar. It wasn't said, but it was insinuated that God would be upset if I lit them in the wrong way. I've forgotten much of that now. But at that time, by concentrating on doing things right, according to how I've been taught, I found that at times I was focused on what I was doing and not why I was doing it. The fact that I was doing it for God. And I lost the plot. And today, that is Jesus' warning to those gathered around him and to us. It's how we live our lives that matters. We need to make sure that we're not like the Pharisees who did a lot of religious things like washing their hands and looked very holy. But their hearts were actually far from God. We don't want to be like that. We want to make sure that we don't get caught up in trying to look good when what we need to do is be good and be good for God. And if you ask what that looks like in the real world, then it means things like not just saying the words of the Lord's Prayer on Sunday or any day of the week and then forgetting those words the moment you get outside. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us we pray. Just not that guy who jumped in front of me in the line at the supermarket. Or how about at the end of the service when we're sent into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord? 
and you say amen to that, you agree. But then when you get home, you start arguing with your partner or with the kids. Peace? What peace? A clean heart is what is called for here. And that means that we take in the wisdom of God and the examples of Christ. It means we follow God's will and we live adhering to his rules. And if we do that, if we live with a clean heart, then good things will go on inside us. And when good things are going on inside us, then good things will happen through us and outside of us also. Now don't get me wrong, clean hands are important, and especially in this germ-filled world that we live in today. So don't stop washing them. But a clean heart and all that can bring is much, much, much more important. Because through that we can draw closer to God by sharing in his life. And through that we can change the world. And we don't need to tie up a cat to do it. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, create in us clean hearts and a right spirit, that we may honour you through all we say and do and are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.